Hey, good to see you. Hope you're doing well. My name is Jake Sloan, and today we're talking about the Zeun Weeble Lab and why I think it's the best gimbal on the market at the moment for anybody who travels a lot, who hikes, who goes outdoors, adventure, who likes to make cinematic content while exploring the world around them. The Zeun Weeble Lab is the best gimbal that you could possibly own today. First, this video is not sponsored by or paid for by anyone. This gimbal was not sent to me free by anyone. I purchased this with my own money for use in my production company. So this is my honest review of what I think this gimbal is good at, who I think it's for. Uh, I'm, it's not gonna be a super in-depth review because there's a lot of those out there already, but just more my thoughts after using this gimbal for a few months and coming from the DJI Ronin S, um, what some of the great features are for this this particular little extremely compact travel gimbal i mean look at that it's so little and that's probably one of the best features to start off with for anybody who travels who uh packs a camera bag and you you hike you go out kayaking you travel the world you fly around a lot of places or in my case hiking uh jumping in and out of small airplanes this gimbal is fantastic for that one it's super lightweight so it's easy to carry it folds down to a really compact size and it's easy to throw in my camera bag and take with me different places or strap it to the outside of my camera bag if need be. Um, and that I think is probably one of the best features to begin with is the fact that there is so much potential and so much power packed into such a small package. Any of the footage that I show you in this video is going to have been shot with my Sony a7 III and the Tamron 28 to 75 or the Sony a7 III and this Laowa 0D 15mm 2.0 lens, which is a great all manual heavy lens. Uh, and I've also shot some stuff with the Sony 85 1.8. Now, let's talk about some of the strong points of this gimbal. I think one of the best things is that because this gimbal is lightweight and it's meant primarily for small, lighter weight mirrorless systems, you do need to balance it well for it to work. It doesn't have a super heavy payload and that was the first thing I noticed with the DJI Ronin S compared to this is that you, you have to balance this well. The DJI Ronin S, you could really, if you got it close, it was fine. It had really powerful motors. This is a little bit more finicky. So balancing it is important, but it's easy because they included these little uh, locking mechanisms which make it so you can balance, put the camera on here. I would put my camera on here, but I'm filming on it. Um, and balance one axis at a time, lock it, and then do the next axis, lock it, and then do the next axis, where once all three are done, you can undo them all, make any final adjustments you need to, and it's ready to go. The great thing about this is they've designed this with a combination Manfrotto plate and Swiss Arca plate. I use a lot of Swiss Arca plates because um, I put them on my tripods and everything so I can switch things out really fast. So the nice thing is leaving the Arca plate on my camera, being able to pop it on here and having it balanced for that lens and camera combo already means that I can just pop the camera on here and go and then I can take it off, put it on a tripod and go or just hand hold it and take pictures and then pop it back on here and I'm ready to go. That's a tremendous time saver than having to rebalance every, every single time. One of the things I really like about this gimbal is that they've departed from the classic, just kind of a single post that you held onto with some controls on it and then way down on the bottom somewhere was a tripod mount, hopefully. Um, but they've, they've flipped it up and I'm excited about this because I think we're finally starting to see potentially where these small form factor handheld gimbals can go. And that is being able to switch the, uh, tripod which also doubles as a handle or any sort of handle that has a quarter 20 mount on the top um, i'm going to do some accessories that i've been using with this a lot in an upcoming video so be sure and subscribe to the channel so you can find that video as soon as i release it but you can flip the handle around put it on the top and then slip this if this is unlocked into underslung mode or briefcase mode where you can skim along the surface of something and get some really tight really great shots that really emphasize that motion um, that you're going along with. The other thing that this can do when it's in this mode is if you flip it to uh, vortex mode, it will do a 360 barrel roll. That, uh, I think that's a little bit of a gimmick. It's fun to play with. I don't see myself using it that much as a, as a filmmaker or as a, obviously as a photographer. 
Um, but I think in certain circumstances, it would be useful and it would be fun, um, maybe for skateboarding videos or something like that. The other thing that I really, really like about this is at least with Sony cameras, I've been using this with my a7 III, you can plug in the USB to this little tiny wireless HD image transmission module up here, and it will give you full control over all of your settings right here. So you can start and stop recording, you can change your shutter speed, you can change your aperture, you can change your ISO, assuming that you have a lens that is all automatic like that. Um, with the app, the ZY Play app, you can actually, and I do have the phone holder, um, which goes right in here. And this, actually this phone holder design is really cool too. Now you put your phone in here and then you have a, a, a second screen that doesn't get blocked, isn't not gonna be at a weird angle that you can always kind of check your framing at. It's a little bit laggy, so it doesn't work perfectly, but it's 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 good. I And by laggy, I mean, it's, there's, there's some lag. It's pretty noticeable lag there, but it's not terrible. You can certainly frame up a shot and get an idea of it as you're going. The other really cool thing about the app is you can actually track yourself or a subject and it works really pretty well by drawing a box, you tap a, a certain thing. Um, and I can do an in-depth video if you want, let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to do an in-depth video of the app and controlling this, but you can draw a box around a subject and track it. And that is really, really cool, especially if you're filming yourself a lot. Being able to do something like that is, is tremendously helpful. Another nice feature is they put a trigger up here so you can double tap to recenter the camera and put it back to like it's zero first position or whatever. If you hit it three times, the gimbal flips around and it's now become a selfie camera. So you can vlog with a gimbal stabilized 4K full frame image, which is great. So let's talk about some of the modes really, really quickly, and I'll link some videos down below that show you a lot more in depth of these different modes. They're not my videos, they're other people's videos, but they'll be very helpful to you. Uh, so first, the default is always pan follow, which means the vertical axis, the up and down is locked, um, and your left and right axes is what's smoothed out. So you can pan and follow something left to right or right to left, which is great. You can also move the, the field or the camera up and down on the vertical axis using the joystick, or you can move it with your hands and, and it will stay wherever you leave it. Then if you turn it down to lock mode, which is actually kind of fun, is you can turn and move this thing any direction you want to, and the camera will always stay locked in the direction that it was. Flip that switch back up, you're back to pan follow and ready to go. Now, if you wanna hit go mode, all of the response becomes really fast. So if you're shooting fast paced action, sports or something like that, you'll probably find yourself holding the go mode button down quite a bit. You can also cycle through the modes by hitting the POV um, to get into the vortex mode and get out of the vortex mode. And when you're in the pan follow tilt mode, you can also tilt it up to 30 degrees one way or the other in order to get that uh, like you're flying through the air, I guess, something like that. So those, that's just a brief overview of some of the modes that this thing is capable of. Um, there are more and there are more options and more controls when you're in the app, but overall it's really, really good. Now let's talk about who this gimbal is not for. This gimbal is not for you if you have a heavy camera setup or a heavy lens setup. The Sony A7 series works great, the Panasonic's work great. Um, as far as the weight goes, the, the Sony with my Tamron 28 to 75 works really, really good. It works good with this Lawa lens, which is heavy. Uh, I have seen where a few people have been able to balance the like 16 to 35 F4 on it, but any of those uh, lenses or larger, like the Grandmaster lenses, you're not gonna be able to balance them on this properly because it's gonna have to sit too far back and they're starting to push the weight limit of the gimbal. They say it's six and a half pounds, but I would stay more to the four pound range. And, and like I said before, it has to be balanced well. But if you have a Sony mirrorless system, the Canon mirrorless system with some of the lighter lenses, the uh, Panasonic or uh, the Sony A6000 series, this is a great gimbal. And so like I was saying earlier, if you're traveling and you're moving and you're staying kind of lightweight anyway, which is why I have a mirrorless system and, and left Canon a few years ago, um, this thing is fantastic because it folds up easily. It, it, it's super compact when it's folded, when it's all folded up and, and put away. It fits in your bag really easy. 
and, um, and it's super lightweight. The batteries last all day, easily eight, nine, 10 hours. Um, I've been using this, even in the cold, the batteries don't drain fast, which is really encouraging for me because I'm in the cold a lot. If you have a heavier setup, then you're gonna wanna look at the Crane Lab 3, which is the same form factor, it's just bigger and much more uh, heavy duty and capable of carrying a lot heavier loads. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in buying the Weeble Lab or checking it out for yourself, then there are links in the description that are affiliated links. Those give me a small commission and no extra expense to you, but they do help support this channel and the content I'm making like this. Um, this is one of my favorite filmmaking tools right now. I love this thing. It's great. It goes everywhere with me because it can. It's small and compact and easy to take. Thanks for watching. I would love to know your thoughts. If you use this or other gimbals, let me know in the comments below. Um, if you like this video, if you found it helpful, then hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon. Give me a thumbs up. My name is Jake Sloan. I'll see you again soon in the next video. <music>